Hey guys, it's Gordon Fastin by Fungi. I'm out here in Napa in some oak habitat, and we just found the spring cocora, Amanita vernicocora. These are large mycorrhizal mushrooms. They're edible like the winter cocora, except they're a much brighter yellow. So these are mycorrhizal growing the oak trees behind us, and we just walked up and saw these things popping out of the hill. I wanna go over some of the features of what defines an edible Amanita versus some of the toxic or poisonous Amanitas, because all edible Amanitas have similar morphological traits that you can learn and use them to robustly identify edible versus a toxic amanita. One of the important things to do with amanitas is to try to get them out from the base so you can see the vulva, which is not always easy to do, but I'm gonna give it a shot here. I'm use a knife to kind of leverage underneath and pop it out. And the vulva is sort of the remnant of the uh, universal egg that the amanita comes out of. So all amanitas start out as little, little eggs and they blossom out of that. And this cottony white veil around the outside is the, the remnant of that egg. So this is what's called a vulva. Here's our stem or our stipe. We have this little bit of partial veil left behind and a nice big cap with a thick white skull cap on top that peels off fairly easily. One of the things that defines these cocoras and vernicocoras is that they have a fairly long uniform stipe with no bulbous bottom. The poisonous ones, the death cap, the destroying angel, have sort of big bulbous bottoms. And so this is, is a fairly a small pointy vulva. The stipe inside is hollow, so I'll show you guys that in a second. We have this bit of a partial veil that is kind of white and creamy, I mean gills, and this, this white cap that peels off along with the striations along the edge of the cap. So all these sort of features combined help tell you that this is an edible Amanita. Clean this off. You guys want to come in here? I'll show you a little bit closer. Uh, look at this this mushroom. <gasps> lots of lots of good stuff going on here. But I'll trim the base of this vulva off. I'm going to put this back into the hole where I got it. Try to help the mycelium kind of regrow. Stipe has a hollow, pithy center, and that would be true if I cut all the way through this mushroom. So all that stuff together says that this is the springtime cocora and Manita vernicocora, which is. Supposedly a pretty good edible mushroom, so we're gonna give it a shot. We're out here in Napa looking at oak habitat, and we thought we found a gigantic Amanita ocreata, the destroying angel. But when we cleaned the dirt off the top, we saw this beautiful yellow color and this thick cottony veil on top. And that told us that this is Amanita vernicocora, the springtime cocora, uh, which was really cool because this is an edible mushroom. Uh, it's mycorrhizal, so it's grown here with the oaks. I'm gonna dig it up by the base so you guys can see how sort of impressive uh, this mushroom is, truly. It's very, very large, very cool. Wow, look at that. So this is our, our vulva down here. And we can kind of just peel this part off. And I'll plant that back down in the soil. Got our stipe and our veil and this, this thick cottony part that just peels off the top, along with very well-defined striations along the edge of the cap. And all that stuff together helps us uh, know that this is one of the edible Amanitas versus one of the toxic Amanitas. Uh, I'm really excited to try this because I've never found a Vernicocora and felt confident enough to eat it, but I do now. So we'll give this one a shot. Let's listen to the nice little reverb on that. Yeah, that is a solid mushroom. So this is Amanita Vernicocora. Look at the size of this. I wonder if they're as fishy as the as normal cocora. Yeah, we'll find out. <laughs> 